I am here with the Nothing Phone 2A, the latest phone from Nothing. And this is a unique new phone in their lineup in that it's the first budget-minded phone. It's not gaining for premium flagship territory, and it's also not going for value flagship territory. This is a phone designed for folks who want to spend as little money as possible while still getting all the basics. Obviously with a name like Nothing Phone 2A, this phone shares a lot of DNA with the Nothing Phone 2, which came out in 2023. So what I want to talk about today is all the differences between this phone and the Nothing Phone 2. And you'll be surprised to know that there are actually a lot of similarities between the two, even though they have drastically different prices. These phones are almost the same size. In fact, I would go so far as calling them exactly the same size. They may not measure exactly the same size on paper, but when you hold one up to the other, there's very little differences between the two. As you would expect, since the phones are basically the same size, their displays are basically the same size as well. And nothing even went so far as to continue using slim symmetrical bezels all around. This is usually a premium feature that you only see in higher end phones. So the fact that nothing has brought it to this cheaper phone is pretty cool. The displays also have the same glass, which is Gorilla Glass 5. This is an older glass, so it's not going to be as durable as something like you would see with the new Gorilla Glass armor on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but it's going to get the job done. Even the buttons are basically the same size and in the same location. It's very clear that Nothing just took the basic concept of the Nothing Phone 2 and just transferred it to the Nothing Phone 2A. You may think that the Nothing Phone 2A and the Nothing Phone 2 have different cameras because they look drastically different, but they're not. The camera hardware underneath the camera module is exactly the same. The lenses, the megapixels, everything. It's exactly the same. It's just moved to this very interesting eyeball-like position. The bottoms of the phone are also the same with the SIM tray and the speaker grill and the USB-C ports all being there. And they even both share dual SIM card trays. So if you're looking to use a dual SIM phone, the Nothing Phone 2A will provide. Durability ratings are also the same. They both are rated for IP54, which means that it can handle light splashes and some basic particles like coarse sand. I would not recommend taking this to the beach because if it takes a dip into the ocean or gets into some fine sand, you're gonna have problems. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. The fingerprint sensor is also under the display, just like on the Nothing Phone 2, and it's also in the same spot, which is a controversial move. The fingerprint sensor is a lot lower than on lots of other phones. This might be nice if you have smaller thumbs so that you can get to the bottom of the phone easier, but for most people, you're gonna find that you have to get used to moving your thumb down just a little bit. And the software is the same too. Both are currently running Nothing OS 2.5 based on Android 14. So that's all the things that are the same, and you might be thinking, well, what's left to be different? Well, there is quite a bit, so let's jump right into the first difference. The first major difference is the glyph, the lights on the back of the phone. You'll note here on the Nothing Phone 2A that there are only three lights. You'll also need to know that this light up here is actually multiple zones of lighting. This enables it to do things like do countdown timers and Uber timers, so you can see when your Uber car is coming to pick you up just by looking at the light. So that's something that carries over from Nothing Phone 2. However, the charging light at the bottom is not going to be there because the light's just simply not there. So you're gonna have to sacrifice some glyph functionality with the Nothing Phone 2A. Speaking of the back of the phone, this back is not glass. It is polycarbonate, or otherwise known as plastic. But cool thing is that the plastic actually comes from scraps used when making the Nothing earbuds. So that's pretty environmentally conscious of Nothing and kudos to them for that. One of the most significant differences between these two phones though is the processor. Inside the Nothing Phone 2A, you'll find the MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Pro. This is a decent chipset that Nothing and MediaTek worked together to fine tune specifically for this phone. However, no matter how you slice it, it's not nearly as good as the Snapdragon Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 that you'll find in the Nothing Phone 2. So if gaming and processing power in general is what you want, this one is not gonna cut it nearly as well as the Nothing Phone 2 will. That all being said, the phone's still gonna be good enough to do everything you need it to do. All your standard smartphone activities, such as checking your email, browsing the web, 
checking social media, taking photos, uploading photos, all that stuff's gonna be fine. But if you really put this through its paces, the Nothing Phone 2 is gonna beat it hands down. Another major difference between these two phones is connectivity. So the Nothing Phone 2 is designed to work well in the United States on pretty much every carrier and all the network bands that you need. But the Nothing Phone 2A is not. That means that if you use this phone in the United States, you're not gonna get the same coverage as you would with the Nothing Phone 2. That's something to keep in mind, but we're gonna touch on that in a minute because I'm I'm going to talk a little bit about the United States and this phone because it's quite a unique situation. RAM and storage for these two phones is also nearly the same with an 8 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte model, and then also a 256 gigabyte model. However, the Nothing Phone 2 has a 512 gigabyte option, which the Nothing Phone 2A does not have. So make your decision really well because whatever storage level you decide on, that's what you're stuck with forever. Earlier in the video, I told you that the displays are basically the same, but the actual hardware of the display is not the same. On the Nothing Phone 2, you have an LTPO OLED panel, which means that it can go from one hertz to 120 hertz and every stop in between, depending on what you're doing on the phone. So if you're reading text, it'll drop way down because you don't need 120 hertz for that. But when you're gaming, it'll jump right back up to 120 hertz. With the Nothing Phone 2A, you only go as low as 30 hertz. Not a big difference, but if you're somebody who likes to make sure that you're saving as much battery power as possible, you're not gonna get same battery efficiency from this display. The Nothing Phone 2A is also not gonna get quite as bright as the Nothing Phone 2. The Nothing Phone 2 goes up to 1600 nits as its peak brightness, whereas Nothing Phone 2A only goes up to 1300. But remember, these numbers are kind of meaningless. In your day-to-day -day life, both phones are gonna be bright enough for what you need. I also mentioned earlier in the video that these have the same charging speed, and that's true, but one thing is majorly different when it comes to charging, which is that the Nothing Phone 2A does not have a wireless charging coil right here. That means no wireless charging for the Nothing Phone 2A. Speaking of charging, the Nothing Phone 2A has the biggest battery of any Nothing Phone ever. That's 5,000 milliamp hours. That's pretty big and also 300 milliamp hours bigger than the Nothing Phone 2. So if battery life is of major concern to you, you might wanna go with the Nothing Phone 2A, which is kind of strange considering this is supposed to be the lower end model. Jumping over to the cameras, I did say that they have the same hardware, but that doesn't mean they have the same features. The Nothing Phone 2A only does up to 4K 30 frames per second, while the Nothing Phone 2 can go up to 4K 60 frames per second. This comes down to the chipset. The Nothing Phone 2A's chipset is not powerful enough to do 4K 60. So if you're gonna be recording a lot of video and you wanna make sure you get as many frames as possible, the Nothing Phone 2 is gonna be the better bet. The selfie cameras on both the Nothing Phone 2 and the Nothing Phone 2A are very similar. They have the same sensor size and they both have the same resolution at 32 megapixels. However, the Nothing Phone 2A has a slightly larger aperture, which means that it accepts more light that could mean that we're gonna see better low light performance for selfies on the Nothing Phone 2A than we see on the Nothing Phone 2. The software commitment for the phones is also the same with three years of Android upgrades and four years of security patches. However, important thing to note, this phone, the Nothing Phone 2A, is launching with Android 14, which means it'll get Android 17. But the Nothing Phone 2 launched with Android 13, so it'll only get Android 16. So if you're in this for the long haul and you wanna keep the phone as long as possible, the Nothing Phone 2A might be the better buy. Finally, the most significant difference between these two phones is the price. The Nothing Phone 2 starts at $599 here in the United States, while the Nothing Phone 2A starts at $349, a $250 difference, which is not P nuts. However, there is a big asterisk here, which is that the Nothing Phone 2A is not technically available in the United States. In order to get it, you have to sign up with Nothing as a developer in their new program. You basically apply and then Nothing sends you a link to buy the phone. You'll have to accept some terms and conditions that tells Nothing that you understand that this phone is not designed to work in the United States. And if you face any problems using the phone in the United States, that's your problem and not nothing's. So you're gonna have to decide if that $250 is really worth it. But when it comes right down to it, these phones are very similar between each other. And that should mean that saving $250 to get what is essentially a very similar phone could be worth it. You just have to decide whether you wanna jump through those hoops to get it here in the United States. Let us know in the comments what you think, which phone do you think is the better buy? And also let us know if you plan on trying to get one of these in the US, because we wanna know how that process goes for you. And until then, I will see you in the next video.